سخنان دوم ما آقای هلموت گابل عضو سازمان بین المللی حامیان حقوق بشر در ایران شاخه آلمان و فعال حقوق بشر است I would like to thank Südwind for organizing for years now all of these side events. Thank you very much for taking care of human rights. Um, thank you, Diane, for talking so clearly about these cases. Uh, I would like to focus on the mechanisms, on the systematic of what is behind the um, human right persecutions for years now in Iran. So I titled my contribution, my little speech here, with the name Why the Rogue Elements in Iran Love Exclusion and Hate. This short report will focus on human rights violations against religious groups by regime forces in Iran. Furthermore, it will hint at mechanisms of why the regime is interested to actively violate human rights instead of protecting basic rights of citizens in Iran. So we all know that uh, the government of Mr. Rouhani started two years ago by promising to bring about substantial improvement in the field of human rights. But unfortunately, there is rather further worsening in this field. <coughs> Freedom of education, as we heard by Mrs. Diane Aloy, Freedom of opinion and belief, freedom of expression and various other fields of serious individual self-independency are constantly in deprivation in Iran. Divergence and fear, echtelov va tachs, are two main instruments of the regime to control society and secure the survival of the power brokers and further accomplishment of their revolutionary goals. Unfortunately, the purifications of groups that are being defined by the regime as hostile to the regime is continuing in subtle and wily ways. As a multitude of witnesses have mentioned during the last decades and years over and over again, different religious and ethnic minorities are being targeted at by the regime. Be they Kurds, Baluch, Arabs or less known groups, be they Baha'i, Sunni, converted Christians, Ahle Haq, supporter of Muhammad Tahiri and his circle of Erfane Halare, or Sufi dervishes of the Nematollah Gunabadi order led by Dr. Nur Ali Tabande. All of them have suffered serious persecutions by the regime. As you might already know, there are certain power brokers in Iran who insist in following a certain revolutionary agenda which they call Islamic Revolution and which is not limited to the borders of Iran. They persist in persecuting everyone whom they define as enemies of their Islamic Revolution. One of their main websites of this group is named Amar Yun. Amar Yun is the name of the group and the name of the website you can easily find if you speak or read Farsi. These hardliners are heads of ideological units inside of universities, part of the pastoran, part of the education of the elite, and some other institutions which are under guidance of the so-called supreme leader. Their worldviews could be defined as radical religious fascism. 
There are three main activities of the regime and especially of this group inside of the regime that repeatedly lead to human rights violations. And it is a very flexible tactic, as you might realize. As soon as no one looks, they go. As soon as the world looks onto their human rights violations, they stop and find lots of excuses why this happened. So anyway, three main activities of the regime are, first, what they do first, is they publish books full of slander, baseless claims and historical interpretations that arouse many doubts for serious scientific researchers. But they publish them and they distribute them, claiming that this is the truth. Second step, they educate young mullahs, indoctrinate them with certain ideas of hate. And third step, they send them to different cities and regions to incite hate between the population against groups that seem to be easy targets in order to destroy or violate against, as these groups are not protected by power brokers. So even in the West, these groups, they have few people who are aware of them and who speak of them. Anyway, there are as well two ways of accusing or raising accusations against groups and individuals to be an enemy, which might result in executions. First accusation is to be an enemy of God. So they name these people guilty of Moharebe, which is a political accusation in Iran, as in this country religion and state are tightly connected <coughs> to each other. And secondly, The second accusation is to insult the prophet or holy figures, which is a religious accusation and can result in a death sentence when a religious figure, so an ayatollah, releases a death fatwa and creates a persuasive precedent, which might be exemplified by two examples I will give and these two examples I will give are only a little extract of a vast collection of heartbreaking and inhumane stories that are the consequence of this regime's policy. I will mention firstly the dire situation of Mr. Mohammed Ali Taheri and the situation of a social service institution caring for <laughs> poor, elderly and those in special need called Madad Kariye Reza in Tehran. First, about Dr. Mohammed Ali Tahiri. As most of you might know, he's a scientist and uh, the founder of a circle called Erfane Halare. It's an esoteric circle, spiritual circle, called Interuniversalism. He's a healer. This man developed complementary methods of healing and he offered to apply them. He became a director of an institute that opened its doors 2006 in Tehran and which was closed down in August 2010. Meanwhile, Mr. Tahiri was arrested in 2010 and charged of committing an act that is forbidden by religion. So what did he do? During a healing session, he had touched the wrists of a woman for healing reasons. Imagine committing an act that is forbidden by religion to touch a person's hand. He was convicted of offending of Islamic holy persons and sent to five years in prison where he suffered torture, threats to his life, and he was kept in isolation. In protest of his dire condition, 
he started a hunger strike for 12 times. He even tried to suicide himself. He's being considered as a danger to the regime as he attained many followers and attracted too much attention towards his methods. So you see there's a ideological reason for the regime to attack anyone who has his own world vision. In 2011, 14 Shia religious authorities of Ayatollahs declared that Dr. Tahiri was to be considered an apostate and heretic, Murtad, thereby calling their followers <coughs> to kill him. Later, in a letter from 2013 signed by the chair rapporteur of the working group on arbitrary detention, by the Special Rapporteur on the Promotion and Protection of the Right to Freedom of Opinion and Expression, by the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Religion or Belief, by the Special Rapporteur on the Independence of Judges and Lawyers, by the Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in the Islamic Republic of Iran, and by the Special Rapporteur on Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman or Degrading Treatment or Punishment Pursuant to Human Rights Council Resolutions 15 18, 16 4, 22 20, 17 2, 22 23, and 16 23, Dr. Tahiri's imminent risk of execution is being addressed. This danger is still prevailing. So, that shows that the situation is escalated. It escalated to the point that Mr. Tahiri touched a person's hand and now is in danger of being executed. Why? There's a person in Iran, he's the head of Parliament's Cultural Commission. His name is Ahmad Saleh Kashani. Well, he's an official member of the regime in Iran and officially he insisted to kill Mr. Tahiri as the ideas of Mr. Tahiri might mislead young persons from the ideological version of Islam followed by the state of Iran. So clearly, whoever thinks differently is subject likely to be excluded or even killed. This statement by a high official is blatant sign of how the rights of innocent people are not respected in Iran. So now I will give the second example which concerns the Social Service Institute Madat Kariya Reza in Tehran. What happened? It's just a few weeks ago that the building of this Reza Social Service Institute, which is affiliated with Gonabadi dervishes, was shut down a month ago, barricaded and sealed. Other social service buildings, including the administration, education and even the elderly home divisions, were also shut down. People were just sent to the street. With the involvement of plainclothes agents of the Office of Sects and Religions, the security forces of the army, Basij, so they are the paramilitary forces, and intelligence service entered the private home of Mr. Ali Akbar Bonagdar, a member of the Gonabadi Dervishes, and the director of the non-profit institute known as Madat Karier Reza. They confiscated all of Mr. Bonagdar's personal property and transferred them together with him and his family members to the offices of the Institute for further investigation. There, the aforementioned agents began to review the documents and records available in the offices and then seized, packed, confiscated and hauled away all documents, records, computers, and all other equipment and property of the Reza Sh Social Service Institute. With the help of a group of Gonabadi dervishes, 
the Reza Social Service Institute has been operating for over 20 years and serving the public in a multitude of social service fields, including education, health care, job placement, elderly home, etc. So what happens now? What does the regime accuse them of? The Ministry of Information accused the Reza Social Service Institute to take steps to support promotion and development of Sufism. So, mind. Helping people, elderly, people in need of care, is to propagate Sufism. So what exactly is the regime's ideology propagating then? Hate and violence. According to some estimations, there are around 10 million dervishes and family in Iran. They are not allowed to have an own publication organ. 10 millions not allowed to have an own publication organ. A website close to the dervishes is banned and filtered inside of Iran. Each news about dervishes horrifies the regime as the agents fear the unity and coordinated actions of self-defense of this group. When the agents of the regime destroyed a large assembly hall in Rome in 2006, around 2,000 dervishes were arrested as they had made a ring around the hall to protect it from being destroyed. These are moments the regime fears. They fear solidarity and public opinion and therefore try hard to sweep all news about their human rights violations under the rug. So let me come to a conclusion. There are two main argumentation lines in order to rectify the persecutions of dervishes from the side of the regime. First argument of the regime, the dervishes are spies as during 18th, 19th century British colonialists in India sent them back to Iran to introduce a soft Islam. One accusation. Second accusation, the dervishes are not a religious group, as they do not submit to the leader of the system as his followers and cry foul when the regime attacks them. So, you are not a religious group if you say, stop persecuting us. They are being accused instead to be a political group and part of the sedition, as their leader, Dr. Tabande, in the beginning of the revolution was a member of a political party. From this fact and from the time the dervishes supported uh, Mr. Karubi for reasons of thankfulness that he raised his voice against their persecution, the regime would like to devise a case against the group as a political group in opposition to the regime. The consequence of this would be to accuse any dervish of Moharebe. Whatever representatives of the regime in Iran will tell to the world in order to divert the attention, attention from its revolutionary plans and deeds of destruction, it seems that the opposite of what they say is true. While some representatives of the government try to persuade the world that Iran has no political prisoners and people are only accused of crimes, and not being persecuted for their social, ethnic or religious affiliations, the group of Amaryun continue their task of destruction. The mechanism of destruction follows a complicated logic, but if we put this mechanism in a nutshell, it can be described as follows. First, define those groups who have few defenders or none in the world, Defame them on a large scale seemingly by an Islamic reasoning. Incite hate against those groups in a certain layer of the population and act against them by different violent manners, be it physically or by excluding them from certain professions, destroying their cemeteries or closing their social or educational institutions. In case someone important with some public weight in the Western countries raises concern publicly, the persecutions will halt or rather come to a pause until some time passes and attention will be eased off towards these persecutions. Later, again, 
the agents will continue their violating actions and so on and so on and so on and so on. In order to stop the regime it needs constant vigility to its plans and actions and it will be important to follow the famous Persian poet's advice, Saadi, for those who respect human rights. And he said, if the ants will stick together, they will certainly pull off the dragon's skin. Thank you very much.